Hello everybody, starting from this video, we're going to look at three different methods you can use to assigning the probability. So in the previous video, we understand what is probability and how to figure out the, uh, the outcome for the experiment, especially the experiment involving the multiple steps. So uh, after this video, we're going to look at uh, uh, the probability for the event and the basic, um, uh, basic relationship of the event. So first, let's look at three possible methods you can use to assign the probability. So the uh, no matter we can introduce three methods. However, you have to understand the fundamental rule when we're using any of those methods to assign the probability. So there are two rules to guiding us to understand if we have the right method to assign the probability or whether our outcome is correct. So first of all, any probability or sign has to be between zero and one, and a zero one and inclusive and inclusive. So the inclusive means. Um, the probability has to be between 0 and 1 and then inclusive means uh, if you have n possible outcome for an experiment so if you add n possible outcomes probably together it has to equal to 1 so that is called exclusive inclusive inclusive so that is the two basic principles to guiding us to make assign the probability no matter which method you're going to use these two probably has to be satisfied so let's look at the three possible methods you can use to assign the probability. So the first method is called the classical method. So you're assigning probability based on the assumption of equally likely outcomes. So what does that mean? So without uh, uh, going further to a classical method, I want to ask you for toss the coin once, toss the coin once, what's the chance for me to get a head and what's the chance for me to get a tail? So I'm sure I have students say, oh, 50% chance to get a head, 50% chance to get a tail. So you got the right answer. So how did you get that number, 50%? Okay, so maybe you never think about it before. So let me explain how you get 50%. So when you do one exper uh, experiment outcome, uh, uh, toss a coin once, you can add either head or tail, right? So these are the two possible outcomes, two possible outcomes. Then we're going to use the classical method to assign the probability. So for the classical method, we mean for head and the tail, they are equally likely to happen. So basically, they have exactly the same chance to happen. So now we have two possible outcomes. So head is one out of the two outcomes. And tail is another two out of two, uh, one of two outcomes. So therefore, this is the probability for head. And this is probably for tail. So underlying assumption is we believe and the head and the tail, they're equally like to happen. And the same situation we have is toss a coin, a fair twin, a fair die once. You will have one, two, three, four, five, and the six possible outcome. So, we, uh, so the chance for us to get one is one over six because we're using the classical method. So each outcome, they are equally likely to happen. Therefore, one is one out of six outcomes. So the chance for me to get one will be one over six. And two will be one over six as well because the two is one, of, one out of six outcomes. So the same for three, four, five, and six. So you can see for each outcome, they had exactly the same probability because we assume they are equally likely to happen. So, and also, uh, so this is the probability distribute, uh, the probability we signed for the experiment called the uh, toss the coin once. So this is the probability distribution we assigned called the we are uh, roll the die once. So you can see all the probability is between zero and one. And if you add the probability of the outcome together, so one over two plus one over two, you got one. The same one plus six plus one plus six to the, to the one plus six, you also get one. So they are both satisfy the requirement of the signing probability. So this is the first method called the classical method. Remember the condition is you believe for each outcome they're equally likely to happen. Okay, so this is the first method. Now we look at the second method that is called the relative frequency method. So this method is different from the first classical method because the classical method is of relying on assumption. So the relative frequency method is relying on experimentation or historical data. So basically we are find a possible outcome for the uh, for the uh, we, we find a possible outcome for the experiment 
and then we do mon uh, multiple times experiment, then we create a relative frequency distribution. So that relative frequency will represent in the uh, probability. And then later I will show you an example pretty quickly actually. And so how we create the relative frequency um, using the relative frequency method to assign the probability. And then the last method is called the subjective method. So basically you're using your own judgment to make a, to assign probability for different outcomes. So some students might ask, how am I going to trust myself? That's why when we are looking at a business world, when we are assigning probability, it's based on a lot of knowledge you learn from your uh, your professional classes, your finance class, or your business classes. So you build on your own uh, your criterion, and you'll be able to uh, assign the probability. The rule of thumb is the probability is representing the uh, the currents, the possible occurrence of the event. So if you assign a relatively higher probability, that means uh, that event is very relatively more likely to happen. If you assign a relatively small probability, that means that the event is relatively less likely to happen. So if you keep that in your mind, and then you will be probably assigned the probability. So uh, as I give you an example of our classical method, now I move on to give you uh, the example for the relative frequency method and then subjective method. And then I will introduce the best practice in the business world. Well, how will you probably assign the probability? So here we look at a Lucas tour rental. So we are using this example to learn how we use the relative frequency method to assign a probability. So look at tool rental would like to assign probabilities to the number of the car polishers in the rent each day. The office records show the following frequency of the daily rentals for the last 40 days. So basically they uh, record for the last 40 days. So how many days they can rent uh, none, uh, how many of them rent, uh, how many days rent one, two, etc. So this is the, uh, the the result for the last 40 days. So maximum of the polisher were rent was four. And then uh, the minimum is rent nothing. And then we do have days rent one, rent two, and three. So zero, one, two, three, four will be the possible outcome of experiment that is renting uh, the polisher. And then the experiment we did is uh, then we look at the past 40 days. So now we receive this uh, two column is called a frequency distribution. In order to using the relative frequency to assign probability for the chance to rent the, uh, zero polisher, one polisher, two polishers, three polishers, four polishers. What we're gonna do is we convert our frequency distribution to relative frequency. And then that relative frequency will be considered as the probability. Therefore, on this slide, the first and the third column consist of our, uh, our probabilities. So how to read the, this probability? So we have 45% chance to rent, rent two, polishy, uh, two polishers in a day, and then 5% chance to rent four polishers, 10% chance to rent zero polisher. So therefore, this is the called the relative frequency method. You can see it's rely on mon, uh, mon, uh, exper <clears throat> experimentation because we look at past 40 days. So we we'll do the same experiment every day, just counting how many polishers were rent, and then we we'll create this relative frequency. So this method is called the relative frequency method. So for the subjective method, as I said, based on your own business sense, and the reason we are uh, uh, mention here is I just want to mention that uh, make sure when you assign your own subjective method, um, probability, keep in mind the degree of the belief is represented by the probability. The higher the probability uh, means you have high degree of the belief uh, that the event is going to happen, that outcome will happen. And if that you give a lower probability, that means that outcome will be less likely to happen. And so uh, the best practice. Okay, so the best practice in the business world is not to rely on one method. Usually it's a combination. Either classical method combined with the subjective estimate or relative frequency of method uh, plus the subjective estimate. So basically the first two methods, classical relative frequency, so they are just like pure math, pure statistic. Since we're gonna using those numbers to solve their real world problem, you have to use your own critical thinking ability to adjust the probability you receive using the first two methods. Therefore, the best practice is not just one method. Actually, it's a combination between cl 
classical and the subjective or relative and the subjective. So that is subject method. So let me show you the example about the subject method. And we're going to actually use this table to work on the uh, following event, uh, the problem for the event in the next video. So the Bradley investment we already seen before. And uh, in the previous video, we discussed the eight possible outcome. If you don't remember, please go back to look at or watch the previous video, how this eight outcome comes from. So these are the eight outcomes. So the Bradley investment based on the historical data and their plus their own experience. So they assign the probability. So those probability is not being calculated. Uh, yeah, it's, you cannot calculate here because it's literally calculated by the Bradley investment using your, uh, the, the confidential information, historical data. So they got those estimates. So these are the subjective um, probability, subjective probability. Therefore, you cannot ask me how they get it. You should ask the Bradley investment. So they have their algorithm to figure out those probability out. So this is not being uh, purely calculated as a mathematical formula. However, uh, what I want to point out is, since this subjective method assigned probability, so two probability has to satisfy. First, the all the probability has to be between zero and one. So you can see all of the probability is satisfied that condition. And the second condition is if you add all the probability together for each outcome, and you should receive one. So let's do it together. So 20% uh, plus 8% plus 16% plus 26% plus 10% plus 12% plus 2% plus 6%. Percent, and then you do get this one. Therefore, uh, this subject method also satisfy the second condition for the probability that is add all the probability together should equal to one. So this is the subject method. So in our next video, and what we're gonna look at is event and their probability and those basic relationship. What I want to mention is we actually gonna use in this subjective method assign the probability to help us to look at different examples. So keep in mind, we're gonna come back to this uh, example again in next video.